Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Adam Cellini. A major announcement from President-elect Donald Trump this weekend. He remains holed up in his Manhattan skyscraper, dealing with everything from staffing to protests. And after a series of reports, voters are left wondering which of his campaign promises will be kept and which will not. ABC's Mary Bruce has more. As Donald Trump builds his White House team inside Trump Tower, outside the streets of New York, filled with protesters for the fifth straight day. Just really scared of what's going on, all the, the bigotry, the anti-Semitism, the misogyny, the racism. He has to be respectful towards the immigrant community. We can't remain silent. From Manhattan to Los Angeles, Crowds marched, their anger and anxiety on display, worried about the president-elect's big campaign promises. Other Republican leaders are now trying to soothe those concerns. We are not planning on erecting a deportation force. Donald Trump's not planning on that. Another big promise, that wall along the Mexican border. Here's what Trump said in an interview with 60 Minutes. They're talking about a fence in the Republican Congress. Would you accept a fence? Uh... For certain areas, I would, but certain areas, the wall is more appropriate. But first, Trump faces one of his most important hiring decisions. Who will be his chief of staff? Now it's official. Trump has tapped Reince Priebus, the chairman of the RNC. For a candidate who ran successfully as a Washington outsider, it's an establishment choice that could anger some supporters. Before the decision, a top Trump ally had warned that choosing Priebus could cause a rebellion in Trump's anti-establishment base. In fact, many of the names of cabinet contenders are established politicians and insiders, like Newt Gingrich, Senator Jeff Sessions, and Rudy Giuliani. Whatever I want to be, I'll discuss with the, the president-elect. That's, that's the best way to do it, not to create more rumors. Just more than two months until Inauguration Day. Mary Bruce, ABC News, Washington. And in addition to announcing Priebus as chief of staff, Trump also named Steve Bannon as his chief strategist and senior counselor. Bannon was Trump's campaign CEO, and he is known for attacking the GOP establishment. Back here on the Sun Coast, Sarasota police are investigating a car that crashed into the front of a business earlier today. The police department says the car crashed into the business on, night, on the 1900 block of Main Street around 530 this morning and broke a gas line. Parts of U.S. 301 and Main Street were shut down while Sarasota County Fire Department and a gas company worked together to shut off the gas line. And the area reopened around 7 a.m. No one was injured in the crash and what caused that crash is under investigation. A dramatic boat rescue off Coquina Beach this afternoon. A family of four were rescued by fellow boaters after their vessel caught on fire today. Look at that video. The Good Samaritan saw the boat and engulfed in flames and navigated toward the vessel to save the passengers. They were able to escape by jumping into the water and swimming to the other boat. They were very excited that someone has finally showed up to save them, although they did not want to jump in the water to get to us, which was very interesting. Um, finally, after telling them, jump in the water, I think they were very scared. They didn't know what was going on. Oh one of the women involved in the rescue says the flaming boat was becoming surrounded by fuel in the water as the group got away. The Coast Guard responded a short time later and thankfully no one was injured by the fire or during the rescue. And I know Wendy Ross and I have been telling you guys to get outside and enjoy your weekends, but uh, Wendy, maybe not like that. Not like that at all. I tell you what, we didn't have very strong winds today. That was a good thing. Lots and lots of sunshine around with just a couple of passing clouds. No rain. That certainly was not part of our forecast for today. And right now we're looking at a temperature reading of 75 degrees. So it's still quite warm out there. 71% humidity. Winds are out of the west at around 9 miles per hour. And we've got some of these clouds that are starting to build. You can see them coming on across the northern parts of the state now starting to filter their way in across our viewing area as well. And we also have some showers now associated with these clouds and we do have a chance for rain. It's a very slight chance, but we do have some rain coming back into our forecast. We are also going to be talking about an event tonight that you don't want to miss. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes and we'll let you know how the beginning of our work week is shaping up. Adam. 
All right, thank you, Wendy. Our month long series Suncoast 2037 continues tonight with a story about the future of Alzheimer's. The Alzheimer's Association projects costs of health care, long term care, and hospice care for Alzheimer's disease will increase from more than $230 billion in 2016 to more than $1 trillion in 2050. ABC 7's Alex Redman looks to what may be done in the future to stop this debilitating disease. We all forget things occasionally, our keys, a birthday, or the time, but when Jean Corn forgets. I fear it's, that's it. I, I have it. I, I have it. And I'm scared to death. I don't want it. I don't want it. Corn has a family history of Alzheimer's disease. Oh my gosh, my mom was a great person. She was a funny, well-educated, happy, loving, very trusting person. Then, Corn says, the parent became the child and the child became the parent. She would repeat herself. She would buy <laughs> pantry full of the same thing over and over again. And like the typical dementia or Alzheimer's patient, she would forget where she put things. The progression of the disease became more serious and complicated. Corn was her mother's primary caregiver. She didn't understand the concept of taking a shower. She didn't understand the concept of using a bowl for, for food. The emotional toll on Corn's family was devastating. Because we all love my mom, and it was very hard for them to see that blank look on her face and, and say, who, who is that? Who, who is that? According to the Alzheimer's Association, 5.4 million people in the U.S. have Alzheimer's disease. Sarasota County, more than 18,600, and Manatee County, more than 11,300. And these are only the ones we know of. Caregiving is changing and shifting in demographics. So the average caregiver now is going to be an older adult caring for another older adult. So a 70-year-old woman caring for a 79-year-old man who may have those cognitive changes. That it looks like the demographics. Karen Reynolds of Sarasota Memorial Hospital's geriatric department is an advanced practice nurse and says we need to prepare future caregivers. And all of a sudden they have to provide these high-tech medical, they have to manage finances, end-of-life decisions, and this creates, again, that huge emotional stress. Reynolds says this is where we are now with treatment. Medications that simply prolong some symptomology. Um, there's a lot of research that cur is currently going on with regards to um, looking at proteins in the brain. So there's been a number of years where medications were failing, trials were failing, but now we have a way of measuring amyloid in the brain from the outside using a PET scan. So when we have a targeted therapy that goes after amyloid, we know we're giving it to people who have amyloid in their brain. Ross Camp Institute in Sarasota conducts clinical trials and is dedicated to developing medication and therapeutic treatments for Alzheimer's disease. Clinical Medical Director Dr. Andrew Keegan says we are making progress. Just, I mean, I have that perspective that we're incrementally seeing improvements. We're getting closer to the targets, and I think we're doing a better job on treating people with the right medicine and picking the right patients. Reynolds says the hope is a healthy lifestyle will help slow progression. Exercise the right foods to eat, socialization, managing uh, depression, early depression. There are some symptoms that do precede Alzheimer's on a continuum for brain health. Corn leads a healthy lifestyle, exercises both mind and body, and says taking care of mom while grueling was a privilege. You can't get angry, you can't get mad, you have to go with whatever is happening. And as a, oh, well, thank you, Alex Redman. That's obviously a beautiful story. And as the holiday season approaches, a lot of people will be in the giving spirit, trying to give back to their communities. But can helping actually be hurting? ABC 7's Kate Flexter joins us live from the Salvation Army with more. Kate. Adam, here at the Salvation Army, staff tell us that generosity can unintentionally be harmful. They tell us that the top three problems facing the homeless right now are drug dealers, sex dealers, and what they call toxic charity. That's the idea that handouts to the homeless will provide short-term relief, but could actually hurt those in need in the long run. But some homeless people we spoke to say those handouts actually gave them hope and motivation to change their situation.
Well-meaning individuals who have compassion for individuals on the street, who are experiencing homelessness, have that draw to give. They're generous. They want to help. But what they don't know is inadvertently, they actually enable people to stay on the street. It didn't make me want to stay homeless. It made me, it gave me faith and like hope that someone cares and wanted to motivate you to get better. And you know, and also like they share other like opportunities and other things that help you get off the street. So it, it just depends on the individual they approach and they tell that to. The Salvation Army says the best way to channel that generosity is to give your time or donations to organizations that can help. Live in Sarasota, Kate Flexter, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Kate, and we'll have more on that story coming up later tonight. And still to come here on ABC 7, a $50 million project in Sarasota County. How crews are working to make a popular road easier for drivers to maneuver. This is a special health alert for seniors suffering with joint pain. If you have Medicare insurance, you may qualify for high quality support braces at little or no cost. I'm thrilled with my knee braces. Now, there is a simple and proven solution for seniors to get out of pain with state-of-the-art support braces. I barely feel any pain at all. Braces for your knees and back, as well as your shoulders and ankles, too. I'm so happy with the quality of these braces. Call now, and you could qualify for a pain-relieving brace at little or no cost. I can play ball again, and it doesn't hurt. And because of my Medicare coverage, it cost me next to nothing. So call now. And because I have this red, white, and blue Medicare card, my braces have cost me just about nothing. It's true. You may get a knee, back, shoulder, and ankle brace at little or no cost. They qualified me for two knee braces and a back brace. If you have knee or back pain, give them a call. They can help. 1-800-476-8967. 1-800-476-8967. Why wait until the turkey has left you feeling tired? The Black Friday sales event has already started at Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Ram trucks are built tough enough to help you conquer whatever the day may throw your way with all the technology and comfort you'd find in a luxury vehicle. Right now, get over 20% off. That's up to $15,000 off a new Ram 1500. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Are you considering joint replacement or revision surgery? Consider this. Dr. Edward Stolarski has performed thousands of successful joint replacement procedures and trained surgeons from all over the world. Using advanced technologies, Dr. Stolarski is able to perform some of the most complex surgeries. I wish I knew about Dr. Stolarski much sooner. After the surgery, I don't have any pain. It's like I've got a 16-year-old hip. My name's Ed Stolarski. What I really do is I give people back their life. Schedule a consultation today. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them, and she's doing fine. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. That's 1-800-652-3012. Call now, 1-800-652-3012. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. A major road improvement project is underway in South Sarasota County. A three and a half mile stretch of River Road is being resurfaced between US 41 and I-75. The area is just north of the US 41 intersection and south of Cent Center Road. Another section of River Road is being repaired north of Center Road to east of Venice Avenue. The county has invested more than $50 million towards improving River Road, which connects Sarasota County to Charlotte County. Work is being expected to finish by early 2017. The winners of the Siesta Key Crystal Classic are celebrating today. The International Sand Sculpting Contest brings together artists from all over the world. The sculptors create art out of one of nature's most widespread features. The sculpt 
sculpture sneak peek took uh, first place this year. The sculptors of Edgar Allan Poe and Anything That Floats Your Boat took second and third, respectively. ABC 7's Bob Harrigan hosted the awards ceremony, and ABC 7 is a proud sponsor of the Crystal Classic. A record breaking 35,000 people have come out so far in the last three days. Beautiful. Beautiful weather out there, beautiful sand sculptures, and uh, we got a beautiful night coming up, don't oh we, Wendy? Oh, my goodness, we have a super moon. <laughs> a super moon. Since 1948, we have not seen a moon this close to us, and you can see it right there. Look at that. And tonight, we're going to see it at its peak at about 845, 852. That will be the peak of it, but that's when the moon is closest to the Earth, and we won't see this again until 2037. 2034. 2034. 2034. Almost 2034. It'll be November of 2034. Isn't that something? That is really cool. It will illuminate anything in your path tonight. You won't have any problems seeing anything tonight. And you'll be able to see it because even though we've got some cloudy weather on the way, we still just have partly cloudy skies at least until 9 o'clock tonight. We're starting to see some of those clouds moving on in with a frontal system that's going to help to bring in a little bit of rain, just some small chances for rain for us. But right now we have partly cloudy skies across our viewing area to fair skies. So if you go outside, you'll be able to see this super moon that's sitting on top of us right now. And again, we just have a few clouds out there. You can see what the temperatures look like once again today. We saw lots of 80s, and then those temperatures will stay right into the 70s all the way through 7 o'clock tonight. And into a few more hours after that, we'll even see some temperatures in the 70s. Today, we actually got up to a high of 83 degrees. Last night, again, we got down to 58. Normally, this time of the year, we should be at 79 degrees for our daytime high. And right now at 75, we're looking at our humidity at 71%. Winds will be out of the west at around 6 miles per hour. And we have partly cloudy skies for us at this hour. Around the state, the temperatures are coolest to our north, and actually that's where the cold front has moved through. And so we're looking at temperature readings here in Jacksonville, 61, Gainesville, 64 degrees. You get into central and south Florida, and we're seeing much more moderate temperatures with our readings mostly in the low to mid-70s. You have to go well inland to find a 60-degree reading, and that happens to be in Sebring right now, 69 degrees. High pressure is still dominating our forecast, and we have this low-pressure area with the trailing front and that frontal system now sagging across central Florida. It's going to continue to press and wobble its way on through the southern part of the state. The chances for rain sadly are not great, maybe a 10 percent chance of rain for tomorrow and uh, into Tuesday and that's going to be about it. And then we're going to see drier air moving on through before the next cold front comes on in and that frontal system here will start to affect our weather beginning next week. So for tonight, we have our super moon. It's the closest to the Earth. The next one will be in 2034. And then we're going to see cloudy and cooler weather beginning Monday and Tuesday. Uh, when cooler is a very relative term. Drier air moves in beginning on Wednesday, and that continues all the way through the weekend. So as you can see, we've got this band of cloudiness that will be coming on down the state, and that's going to affect us for Monday. And again on Tuesday, we'll see cloudy conditions and our chances for rain they're not very high. So this is what we're going to be seeing over the next several days. We have a 10% chance of rain with mostly cloudy conditions on Monday, partly cloudy skies with a 10% chance of rain on Tuesday. And look at that. Nothing but sunshine out there Wednesday through Sunday. Adam. Now, sports. Buccaneers running back Doug Martin returning today on limited duty in the Bucks' home game against the Chicago Bears. The team has gone three and three in his absence using four different running backs, but Jameis Winston would carry the offense today. Third quarter play action. Winston launches one for a wide open Freddie Martino. Bucks take a 24-10 lead over 300 yards and two touchdowns for Winston on the day. Same quarter, Bears backed up in their own end zone, and Robert Ayers, also off IR, tracks down Jay Cutler, who is flagged for intentional grounding. That's a safety, and two more points for the Bucks. Then later in the fourth, Doug Martin in the game takes the handoff one yard for the touchdown. 16 carries for Martin on the day, kissing the end zone. I'm sure he missed it, and the Bucks roll to a 36-10 victory against the Bears.
Panthers quarterback Cam Newton broke another NFL record this afternoon, becoming the youngest player to reach 20,000 yards passing and 3,000 yards rushing. The reigning MVP reached the mark earlier than the likes of Peyton Manning and Dan Marino. The 27-year-old also set a franchise record in career completions with 1,581. In only his sixth season, and uh, Newton has already already owns the NFL record for rushing touchdowns by a quarterback, which he padded with one more during his game in Kansas City today. And after a crazy weekend of college football with three major upsets among the nation's top four teams, Clemson, Michigan, and Washington all handed their first losses. Now that nine of the top 10 teams have moved positions in the latest AP poll. Alabama the only constant at number one. Michigan holds on to the top four, but Clemson and Washington both on the outside looking in. Two Big 12 teams, Oklahoma and West Virginia, now back in the top 10 after the conference was snubbed last week. And Ohio State and Louisville move up to the top four. The next college football playoff rankings, these are the important ones, are to be released on Tuesday. UFC lightweight champion Eddie Alvarez sought to defend his title against featherweight champion Conor McGregor last night, but it's McGregor who makes history at UFC 205. McGregor's second round TKO of Alvarez makes him the first person to hold two belts simultaneously in UFC history. McGregor knocked Alvarez down three times in the first round before finishing him off. And after the fight, McGregor stuns fans by demanding the UFC grant him a share of ownership in the organization, saying the future of his career as a fighter would depend on it. Well, other world-class athletes converge on Sarasota all this week to compete in the 2016 U.S. Open Lawn Bowling Championships. More than 250 athletes from 16 countries will be playing matches at the Sarasota Lawn Bowling Club through Saturday. The club says they are the oldest sports club in Sarasota starting back in 1927. Lawn bowling rules are similar to bocce ball, except the balls roll on a curve instead of straight. Teams look forward to the level of competition in this tournament every year. This is a very special event and the players that are here are the best in over the in different countries and you always want to play the best if you want to be competitive and um, improve your game. Lawn bowling is considered a retirement sport but it attracts athletes of all ages. They hope it will be considered for the next Summer Olympics in Tokyo. More to come here on ABC 7. Stay with us. Let SWC Properties sell your home today. Take advantage of this great market and sell your home for the most amount of money in the least amount of time. SWC Properties gives you the benefit of full service marketing that sells your home faster with the fewest hassles. There are no hidden fees and now for a limited time we'll list your home for 50% off. Wouldn't it feel great to save thousands and feel confident with your move? Give us a call for details or visit swcproperties.com and contact us for a free information packet and find out why. It's simple. We just market your home better. On your TV, on your computer, on your camera, on your smartphone, on your Apple Watch. And now you can get ABC7, your Suncoast News on Fire TV. Just go to mysuncoast.com and click on the mobile tab for a list of fast and free downloads that deliver ABC7, your Suncoast News on the go. Families come in all sizes and shapes. Sometimes your friends are your family by choice, or sometimes you're just stuck with Uncle Charles. But what we know is that you want to protect the people that are close to you. But the flu can unravel everything. Your flu vaccine protects you and your family. No matter what draws your family together, protect yourself, protect your family. Everyone needs a flu vaccine. Download ABC7's free all-new news app at your app store today. At Sunset Subaru in Sarasota, you'll always get the most for your money. More years, more miles, more 2016 IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus winners than any other brand. And right now, you can lease the most award-winning small SUV on the planet, a new 2017 Subaru Forester for just $209 a month. Or get 0% financing, complimentary maintenance included at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom. 
the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. Really? They found me a place for what she could afford and it was magnificent. We're now very confident that she's safe and they just helped every step of the way and I can't thank them enough. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, call a place for mom. This is a free service and you can trust them to help you. Call right now to get your free Senior Care Compass eBook. Find out about the five best kept secrets on financing senior care and assisted living. Call now, 800-290-0352, 800-290-0352. Philippi State Park in Sarasota County is celebrating 100 years this weekend. The 60-acre property is located on the shores of Philippi Creek and is home to the Edson Keith Mansion. It was built in 1916 and listed in the National Registry of Historic Places. The county is celebrating their century of history with games, photography, and other activities for the whole family. This is a historical place, too. I had a Believe it or not, they, part of this was a rooming house in the 60s, and I had a friend who rented a room here. Sarasota County bought the property in 1986 for more than $5 million to preserve it for years to come. The program coordinator for the park expects Philippi Estate to continue to draw visitors, and the number of historical sites on the Sun Coast will expand. I've been to several events there. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of property. It, it really, really is. is. And speaking of gorgeous, go outside and take a look at this supermoon because it really is. You couldn't really capture the size mm -hmm. of it when we first showed yeah. you the pictures, but in, in a yeah. retrospect, you really will be able to see what it looks like. It's gorgeous out there. I'm going to hop out there and take a check yeah, for me sure. Too. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys later tonight. Thanks for joining us. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org.